Welcome back. This is part two where we're going to be glass bedding this Tika stock uh, to fit. Uh, this is a Tika T3 Hunter and we're going to be glass bedding this stock. If you have not yet uh, viewed uh, the first video, be sure you do that before we proceed any further because I, uh, I made mention of some things which are critical uh, to this operation. Uh, and I will also issue a, uh, once again, warn you, this is not easy work. This is not something for a person who is, uh, you know, not detail-oriented and uh, has a hard time uh, working with fussy things with their hands. Uh, this, is, this is potentially very messy work. Uh, it can be, frankly, it can, it can destroy your gun if you're not, um, if you're not capable of uh, doing the things that you need to do to prepare the gun ahead of time and to, uh, and, and to follow through with the work. So you know who you are if you're, if you're good with your hands and if you're skilled and if you don't panic when things start uh, getting a little scary, uh, this is fine, this is good work for you. Uh, but if you've never done this sort of thing before, if you, if you had a hard time building models as a kid and you got frustrated when things started getting fuzzy, uh, give it to an expert, a professional who can do it for you. So anyway, one of the things that you do need to have is you need to have some, I recommend the blue masking tape that's easy to, it's got the glue that uh, adheres nicely, but it's uh, easy to remove. Um, and you need to have good screwdriver bits that fit your uh, gun. You want to make sure that you have all your gun parts available right there on the bench. Make sure you're looking and mentally put the gun back together before you have uh, before you have gunk everywhere because you don't want to have to be reaching for something that's out of reach when you're holding on to your stock. So make sure everything is in, in within reach, uh, within uh, easy grasp. You need to have some Kiwi uh, shoe polish. This is neutral. Make sure you get neutral. You don't want to have black or brown or, you know, ox blood or anything like that because that'll stain things. It'll stain your stock, uh, and it'll 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 weep into your uh, bedding material. Have some vinyl, uh, stretchy, some good, some good uh, quality electrical tape. Uh, I'll show you what that's all about. Make sure you have a uh, some sort of a parts brush or acid brushes. When I say acid brushes, you know you can you can get uh, these these come in the hardware store. These are acid brushes. They're a little bit small, but uh, something like that. Uh, or you can apply you can apply the uh, wax with your fingers also, uh, and we'll show you how to do that. Um, we're going to be working with epoxies that can get into holes uh, and will get into holes and will permanently attach your uh, barrel and your action to your um, to your stock. Make sure you have some uh, good flexible uh, plumber's putty. This stuff here, this stuff here doesn't set up. Uh, it has good elasticity. It'll, it'll hold on tight uh, and uh, it won't dry out on you. Uh, you'll need that. Make sure you have that available. Uh, these are all low-cost things you can get at the hardware store. Uh, this is, we're going to be working with uh, DEVCON commercial uh, grade epoxy. This is an industrial grade uh, epoxy. Uh, you can also use standard DEVCON uh, gel, two-part gel that you can get at the hardware store. I really recommend that you get the gel, not, not the liquid, the stuff that runs, because that's very difficult to control. Uh, you usually have to you know, mix it with some sort of binding agent to keep it uh, in place. And I don't want to get into that sort of stuff. I've made my own binding agents, uh, you know, mechanical additives that you can add in. But uh, it's a lot easier to get the correct stuff to begin with. This is, by the way, this is uh, DEVCON 10110, and this is the uh, putty this is DEVCON Plastic Steel Putty A. This is not the Liquid B. Liquid B is runny and uh, it's uncontrollable. That's for making parts. This is the uh, putty, which is uh, the correct consistency. Um, 
and that's it's a two it's a two part stuff you certainly don't want to be uh, mixing it all up at the same time so be sure you have uh, something that you can measure to the correct proportions uh, and measure only the amount that you're going to use and don't whatever you do don't use the same measuring instrument uh, in both in both tubs because uh, you're going to set up the whole thing this pro this product here uh, costs around fifty dollars um, and it's available only through industrial suppliers online uh, so be sure you use it economically. There's enough here to do uh, quite a number of projects. I, I would estimate easily I could do seven or eight rifles without any question whatsoever uh, with a lot of glass bedding material. We're, we're not going to be using an awful lot. I estimate that the total amount of product that we'd have to use for this entire gun probably amounts to no more than about two or three tablespoons. So that's, that's about as much as I'm going to uh, mix up um, total, total quantity. Um, I will show you uh, how to uh, completely prepare the um, barreled action receiver. Uh, so we're ready to begin. Uh, the first thing I want to do is remove my uh, trigger mechanism. I want to remove, make sure that I uh, have uh, the scope taken off. You don't want to be banging a scope around during this process. You don't want to have anything extra. Uh, you don't want to get that junk on your uh, scope. That'll that'll ruin your scope. So uh, try to try to work uh, as as uh, carefully as you can. Uh, I really recommend. I really recommend. I I'm not going to be doing it myself, but you know if if you tend to if you tend to have sensitive skin things like that, uh, this is this is a potentially carcinogenic uh, product. Uh, it's it's industrial grade stuff with a super warnings on the package that you don't normally see at the hardware store. So, you know, if gloves are appropriate for the person who uh, might be getting into it and getting messy. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm practiced with this stuff. I've done dozens of rifles, so uh, I, know, I know where I'm going with it. But if you've never done it before, be sure you have uh, gloves and protection. I think that's it. I think we're ready to begin. The removal of the Tika trigger assembly is quite simple. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure that your trigger adjustment trigger weight adjustment screw is turned in a couple of turns to give room for your attachment screw to back out. And this rifle has only one attachment screw. Some, some rifles have more than one or there could be a pin. Now anything that I'm describing with the Tika is uh, generally applicable to uh, other rifles as well. So uh, the, this, you know, you have to you have to make adaptations to your own particular uh, rifle design. But they're all they're all pretty much the same. You have to follow the same protocols in terms of uh, being careful uh, and making sure that you don't get into uh, difficulties with any hooks. You want to examine your entire, try to mentally imagine where you would go if you were epoxy uh, to, to attach to this uh, rifle. And you have to prepare for that. So I'm going to set aside my uh, trigger uh, with that's out of the way. I do want to have my trigger guard and I do want to have my trigger screw. Uh, my trigger guard screws, my atta action attaching screws. Again, make sure you have everything ready to go. Make sure that you have the correct, make sure you have the correct bit uh, at hand. Everything needs to be right close by. I can't emphasize that enough. You can't, you can't possibly uh, have time to go down to the store to get things that you need uh, once you start working with this uh, and start setting it up. If you do get into a situation where you uh, absolutely uh, can't proceed any further and you've got uh, epoxy uh, in your action uh, in your stock get it out uh, scoop out all that stuff immediately uh, because you, you don't want you can't you can't go back to it later uh, you'll, you'll have to abort it right there uh, make sure you get the stuff all out as quickly as you can with a putty knife and have a putty knife on hand in case you need to do that I do recommend that you have uh, on hand uh, some sort of application instrument. The, the best thing is just simply uh, tongue depressors like this. I've used this one for several rifles. Um, and you can also 
uh, have you know you can have a standard uh, putty knife you can have I've got I've got a couple of different I've got a couple of different these you can get in art stores you know painters use these to apply uh, art art paint uh, to canvas so these are very handy sometimes they're very flexible steel and these are really nice sometimes for uh, working into places where you uh, don't want to work with your fingers and get this uh, get this stuff on you um, this stuff will you know you want to have some you want to have some paper towels and I recommend you know heavy grade shop towels or at least uh, old rags or something so that you can uh, wipe things off um, so the first the first thing that we want to do is we want to protect the uh, we want to protect and prepare uh, the barreled uh, the barreled action everything that you uh, everything that you do uh, to prepare this ahead of time will make life so much easier uh, later on now you can just simply take this and apply it I'm not going to be bedding further than uh, only about uh, three quarters of an inch forward of the forward of the receiver uh, but I'm going to be uh, applying this all over I want to be sure that I don't miss any spots and that's why I have this brush here because this will get into this will get into places where my fingers can't go uh, apply it get it right into the screw threads you want to have it right in those uh, screw threads everywhere you go uh, and now it's fine to you you want to apply you want to be sure you apply uh, plenty now don't leave uh, you know don't leave gobs in other words it should be a film it should be a heavy heavy film but you don't want to have uh, you know a, a cake of it uh, sticking up because that will interfere with the uh, glass bedding material and uh, it, it can it can very very easily um, you know create a, a bubble or a void later on now I'm going again right into these screw holes be sure you get it everywhere and it's, and also put it where you don't expect to get uh, epoxy because it will go uh, where it will it, it goes to places where uh, that exceed the bounds of your glass bedding project so this is no time to be skimpy uh, you want to be sure this is very important now you want to be sure to get into your uh, recoil lugs your recoil lug recesses it's a little bit difficult with um, with tikas they don't have much room especially with uh, the T3 I'm putting I'm putting wax I'm putting shoe wax right inside the uh, recoil lug surfaces and see if I can get that in there as much as I can because when I apply that four screw that might push a little bit of uh, epoxy up inside that action and we want to be sure to guard against any possibility that epoxy will set up inside that action but uh, we will also have a um, way to um, deal with that later on we'll be backing out those screws and four things set up just to uh, clear the clear it out uh, go over everything very carefully make sure that you've got everything completely uh, covered with uh, wax and again if you've got if you've got places that are uh, gobs you want to get that off you just want to have a uh, a nice even film uh, brushed on and that's that looks like it's about ready to go this is this is called a release agent we're using this as a release agent the one thing you don't want to do uh, you know I for, for many years I've uh, used on and off I've used the, the Brownells release agent and it works the only trouble is is that uh, it does have a uh, un unlike wax uh, and you can use, you can also use butcher's wax you know floor wax but unlike unlike waxes which flatten out and have no thickness release agent does have a thickness I've measured it it can be a half a thousandth or more thick it can be as up, up to a uh, if you use it as applied uh, as they recommend there is and I prefer not to have that sort of uh, thing uh, on my 
uh, receiver. Now the next thing is to do the screws. Fail not to do the screws. Screws are very important. Uh, put a heavy coat on those. This is one place where you want to be sure that the screws have got uh, gobs is fine. It can be it can be a heavy buildup because we don't really care. We want to be sure that there's no um, there's no attachment uh, to the screws whatsoever. You want to be able to release those very very easily. Uh, so and and to the screw head and everything. You don't want to have any, anything bind whatsoever. Set those aside. Brush it right against the grain of the screw, right against the grain of the thread, so that it gets right in, packs right in deep into those threads. That's very vital. So we've made sure we had it in the female threads and the male threads, um, and plenty of it. The trigger guard, again. Now we're not going to be betting the trigger guard. I have betted trigger guards in the past. Uh, with, with trigger guards that tended to be uh, you know, problematic. Sometimes you get a trigger guard that rocks. Uh, I have betted them, but uh, again, that stuff can go places. Now, this is a putty, which uh, tends to be uh, much more controllable, but you know, it's always easier to polish this stuff off afterwards uh, than it is to try to uh, fret over getting your uh, gun apart. So apply that apply that around any places where those uh, where that putty might possibly uh, seep and uh, get into the get into the uh, trigger guard everywhere that is everywhere that is possible if, if it's possible for the stuff to get in there it will and especially if you're working with some of the looser things you know some people use and I've used it many times if you use two-part Devcon epoxy that you can get at the hardware store it's wonderful stuff. Uh, I've betted, I would say probably uh, the lion's share of the guns I've betted was with that stuff. Uh, I'm taking on the recommendation of uh, people who have used this commercial product in the past. I'm taking it on their recommendation that this is even better. So, uh, but whatever you do, now we've got we've got all that uh, completely coated. The screws are coated. We got a screwdriver handy. Um, now, we want to be we want to be very sure we, we step up now to our putty. Now, if you watch my first video, we are not going to be we're not going to be betting front to rear the entire the entire action. I personally believe that it's best to uh, bed two points: bed at the the rear tang and bed at the recoil lug and ahead of the recoil lug by a, just a small amount to provide support. I do not believe in betting uh, the entire action. I have betted entire actions before and I have experienced uh, shots that tend to be uh, erratic because I believe that there's uh, tension problems. And then you get into a situation where you have to torque your screws because torquing the screws is the only way to control the torquing of the uh, the torquing of the action. It's less critical, you know, you hear about torquing action screws. It's far less critical to about torquing the action screws if they're only connecting at the front and the rear because you, you're not dealing with, you're not dealing with uh, torsional stress uh, throughout the entire action. And it really suits uh, longer actions better. This is a long action, uh, the same as you'd have with a Remington long action or a Winchester long action. So this Tika is a long action. It's far better suited for that sort of an action because uh, you, you have a tendency with that length to have uh, stress and torsion built up. Now I'm using this plumber's putty uh, and it's not, this is not window glazing putty. Please do not use window glazing putty. That's an entirely different product. It's unsuitable for this project. Um, now this is where I would take my, this is where I take my knife right here and I'd work it in. Uh, now you say, why am I putting it into the screw hole? Because that's where the screw has to go. Well, it 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 will. The screw the screw will go right in there, uh, and it'll displace that putty, and it'll push it up in. Uh, but I want to have I want to have putty leading the way, uh, so that uh, it provides good protection, so that I don't have um, I don't have that. Uh, when I say putty, I'm talking about the protective putty here. Uh, the plumber's putty, uh, so I don't have the DevCon putty uh, working its way up in. Now, I'll scrape off the excess. 
I love these little artist knives. These are perfect for this. Um, a buddy of mine gave me a set of these. He gave me these when uh, I was doing his uh, Mini 14, and they're they're really great to they're really great to work with, and they don't they're they're soft. They're they're a soft spring steel, so they don't uh, they don't scar your gun up if you are working carefully. Also, any recesses where it's likely to uh, get in, you can roll this stuff up like a sausage and you can push it in I have no I have no need whatsoever for uh, epoxy to be flowing beyond this point right here. If you watched my previous video uh, there are there are bolsters at each end on the Tika. There's a there's a bolster here, which is a raised surface about uh, three sixty fourths of an inch or so, and there's a bolster here, the same thing, and those act as miniature uh, recoil lugs. So I have no I have no need of exceeding the bounds of um, of exceeding the bounds of uh, those bolsters by uh, more than an eighth of an inch or so, and that's all I'm going to do. Um, so I want to be sure that just for the sake of neatness, I want to be sure that I have um, that hole completely protected so that it won't get down inside there. And also analyze things as you go. Epoxy should be allowed to go uh, where it can benefit the uh, bedding job. So uh, right here I'm, I've, I've created a demarcation point from about this point from about uh, three-eighths of an inch in front of this rear bolster. I'm just going to stop my putty right there. This is where my uh, trigger guard will go back. I've filled the trigger guard screw. Now I got to fill the uh, fill the rear tang screw and again don't don't worry about the fact that you're plugging up the hole that you're going to be putting a screw in. That's that's the point. You want to be sure to allow for that uh, and don't interfere with that bolster. You don't want to you don't want to be um, you don't want to be applying putty where that uh, epoxy will go around uh, and snugly fit around that bolster because that's your that's your most important. That's what keeps your action stabilized. Okay, so I've got I've got putty in all those places, and the putty by itself is a good release agent because you know the the putty will will not uh, stick to the um, the putty will not stick to the epoxy, so uh, it'll it'll come out with it. Do one more application of. I'm actually going to apply wax over those areas again because there's a there's a potential, there's a possibility that I uh, wiped away some of that um, some of that wax from the first time. So I again will go back over it. Uh, try to uh, you know try to uh, keep it without being too thick uh, especially where those especially where those bolsters are because those bolsters are your that's your those are your small recoil lugs neatness counts with this stuff spend as much time as you can with this part of the project because um, don't rush because this is this is the most important part of it all uh, the person who pay, pays attention to this part of the job uh, won't be crying later on. Uh, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's pretty scary when you find out that your uh, stock won't release from, uh, won't release from your uh, barreled action. So we should be about ready to begin, but we're going to move up forward here. Now I'm going to show you something that we want to do to the fore end. Okay, just lining things up here. Just for measurement, I'm I'm lining up my holes so that I can get a good idea of where my uh, fore end of the stock is. Uh, about an inch and a half or so, two inches back from the beginning of the stock, I want to wrap I want to wrap tape. I want to wrap uh, blue tape right on the straight section of this taper here, and I want to wrap enough so that uh, it basically fills up the uh, void between the um, free floating. That will stabilize the barrel so that it, the barrel will stay centered in the stock. Uh, that's vital because once you once you glass bed this, if the barrel is canted to one side or another, you own it. You you'll have to you'll have to drill out your glass bedding and start over again. 
Uh, you want to be sure you have your barreled action centered in the, uh, you should have the barrel centered in the uh, fore end of the stock. Okay, now I wound probably about uh, 10 windings. Start and just keep on going around. Each one of these windings is probably about a 64th of an inch or less. So you can gauge it on that basis. Uh, wind on more than you need and then you can unwind uh, and rip off what you don't need. What I, what I have done here now is off camera, I've made it so that it is a snap fit. You want to have that, be sure that it's not, be sure that it's not bridging here. You don't want to have this uh, raised up uh, holding your barrel off the stock because that's the last thing you want to do. You want that, you want that whole uh, thing to snap down nice and tight. I'm saying that I'm probably a little bit snug. It doesn't need to be that snug because I do not want to create, um, I do not want to create any uh, tension there. Um, so I'll, I'll remove I'll remove half a winding right there. Make sure that you look down inside and you can see that your action is bottomed out. Uh, inspect and make sure that your barrel is uh, fully engaged in your forend. Uh, it's all right, as a matter of fact, if it has a little bit of has a little bit of that play because that will prevent you from having any torsion build up. You don't want to have torsion build up when you put these screws in because everything needs to be nice and relaxed when you get it going. Uh, what, what we've done with that tape though is ensure that the barrel is centered so that it won't, uh, it, it won't swing uh, east or west. And that's all, we, that's all we need to do. So once you've, once you've uh, confidently assured yourself that your action is tight and your forend is fully seated and a uh, little make sure it has clearance but make sure that your uh, left to right uh, is not able to uh, swing now you're centered and you you have yourself a uh, free float of gun and if I and as I said in my last video if your rifle has not yet been free floated don't free float it at this time the only thing you want to do is, is place the stock on and make sure that it's not springy. Make sure that this is not applying pressure. If it is, uh, if, if your forend pillar is uh, applying pressure, just sand off enough to relieve that pressure so that uh, it maintains the, uh, the appropriate height. Because you don't want to close up, you don't want to close up the gap between your barrel and your action after you uh, free float it. I mean, after you uh, glass bed it. So leaving that pillar is the same as leaving this tape there. That that provides that uh, that clearance so that you don't have to uh, hog out too much wood. Okay, I think I'm all set to go. We're just going to be very sure that we have, uh, I had that stock on and off, so I'll quickly go back over things. Inspect it, inspect it, inspect it. Make sure you have everything coated uh, and, you're, and you're well covered in case you have that uh, epoxy gets places you're not supposed to get and uh, be sure if you have uh, scope screw holes that your scope screw holes are also plugged uh, either with uh, plug screws or with the putty because you don't want to get that stuff into the screw holes you really have a problem with that okay let's review what we're going to do with the stock we're going to be applying uh, we're going to be applying epoxy putty uh, from approximately uh, the front of the magazine uh, it, some of it's going to flow. Remember, this will this will move around. Uh, it's going to flow a little bit beyond the magazine uh, down along these rails right here. So we're just going to apply uh, putty uh, from this area about uh, three eighths of an inch forward or so of the uh, recoil lug area, and we're going to apply it back here uh, on the tang surface where those bolsters are. Now, <coughs> that epoxy will not, uh, that will not adhere well to any place that is smooth, uh, especially if it's been varnished, or in this case, I just got some uh, wax on it when I was fitting the, uh, fitting the stock with the forend uh, tape. So I want to clean that all off with uh, mineral spirits and then alcohol to be sure I remove the mineral spirits with the alcohol. Uh, and then I want to take a Dremel tool and uh, I just basically rough up 
the areas that I want to apply um, the uh, epoxy putty. Now it's very very important to uh, determine your your boundaries. Make sure that you're be sure that you understand your boundaries. You don't want to be cutting uh, with your Dremel tool beyond the tang. In this case here, uh, it's it's beautiful. I know that the the bolster itself will provide the home for the putty. I really don't have to apply putty beyond uh, that that bolster hole, and it will seep over both sides of it, and it will provide plenty of uh, it provide plenty of contact. Uh, the same here, I can apply just a mound of it uh, in that bolster recess and a little bit extra uh, to, give it some, uh, to give it some contact and then again forward. So I want to be sure that I rough up any area in here and the best way to do that is to take a Dremel tool with a, uh, with a fairly fine bit, about an eighth of an inch diameter bit on the highest speed. Be sure you use it on the high speed because on low speed it will jump and bang around. In the, but before I begin that, I'm going to tape up, I'm going to use my wide tape. I use narrow gauge tape, uh, you know, half inch wide tape on the barrel, but I'm going to use wide uh, tape and tape up the stock where there's any possibility of that uh, bedding agent uh, from, you know, defacing the stock. Okay, as you see here, I've got the uh, sides of the stock taped. Be sure you don't get any tape in the way of where you're going to be applying your trigger guard because that's going to be a problem uh, right away as soon as you uh, start putting that thing back together. <coughs> Again, be sure you have all your stuff handy and ready to go. Uh, I really recommend a Dremel tool for this. This makes it a lot easier. What I'm going to be doing is, because this is the primary area, now I've got a very, very small bit in here. This is like a uh, it's a very small bit, like a dental bit, uh, just to ver make sure it's very sharp. Watch out for this puppy. This collet here uh, is responsible for tearing up a lot of things that they're not supposed to be touching. So watch what you're doing with that. Keep your fingers close to the end of the uh, apparatus and uh, watch everything carefully as you go. And be careful, this, does, this tends to bounce around. So. Uh, be certain that you're operating it on high, high speed. If you notice here, what I've done is I've cradled it uh, in my uh, vise. I've got wood padding, but I've also got a very thick uh, old diaper here, and that's wrapped underneath the stock so that it can't sag down in. In other words, pushing down on this, that, that, acts, as a, that acts as a hammock and hold it so that it, it can't press down inside because I don't want to apply pressure with that vise. That vise can uh, damage that stock. So I just want to apply gentle pressure with the vise, uh, with the vise jaws. And back here, I've swung the vise around so that now my, the toe of my stock is supported by the bench. So we're ready to begin. Our preparation is complete. Up front here, I took out uh, about three-eighths of an inch forward of the recoil lug. Did not touch the back of the recoil lug surface whatsoever. Uh, I lowered this portion by uh, approximately a sixteenth of an inch or so along the sides, about an eighth of an inch. In other words, this, this whole section here is flat, whereas this is contoured. Uh, but I, I did that. Try to do uh, everything straight as you can because you don't want to have uneven uh, pushing up of the barrel on one side uh, more than the other. I didn't go back beyond uh, this uh, bolster surface right here. This bolster surface, I lowered that by about a uh, sixteenth of an inch from what it was originally. So it's now total probably uh, uh, probably less than a sixteenth of an inch. I, I lowered this. Uh, right now it's, it's sitting about uh, three thirty seconds of an inch deep. I roughed up this area right here just to provide adhesion and continuity between these surfaces, but I did not uh, cut into the top surface. If you notice, there's still varnish showing there. You don't want to, you don't want to lose your original height again. That's very, very important. Back here, uh, I simply, uh, this was originally a rectangular bolster recess. I simply uh, enlarged it uh, somewhat of a radius. Um, but again, uh, the, the tang itself will be sitting uh, in its original home uh, where it can uh, have full contact. Nothing forward of that, nothing forward of that bolster recess. I want to have that original uh, surface also. So basically I've maintained the original 
uh, structure of the receiver without altering anything. I'm not going to be applying a compound uh, beyond uh, these bolster recesses and the, um, the actual uh, cut that I made there. So let's get that stuff mixed up. We're ready to begin. Now this is very, very important at this point. From here on now, the clock is going to start, and once it starts, uh, it's not stopping until you're done with the project. So make sure you have every all your ducks are in order. Clear the deck of anything that does not involve this process. Not you don't want to have your trigger mechanism in the way. You don't want your you've got to have a clear vision of the things that are going to be uh, used here. Make sure that you have everything assembled ahead of time so that you're not calling upstairs for help. Make sure you have your screwdriver that fits the uh, your action screws. Make sure you have your recoil lug. Make sure you have your uh, trigger guard, uh, the barreled action naturally. Everything has got to be set. Your two-part epoxy. Uh, you'll need to have a you'll need to have a uh, disposable mixing container. Don't use an aluminum don't use aluminum foil. That's going to tear and drag, and you're going to have a real problem. Uh, have disposable spoons, two, one for each, because you don't want to you don't want to introduce uh, one mixture into the other because you'll uh, quickly spoil fifty dollars worth of um, compound. You want to have some sort of an application trowel. Again, these these spring steel ones are beautiful for that sort of thing that you get in an art supply store. Uh, tongue depressors are, are, are also good for uh, applying the stuff. Keep your hands out of it if you can. This is ugly stuff. I have here a postal scale that's very, very accurate. This, me this measures uh, grams. Uh, you can also use a reloading scale if you want. Don't use a balanced beam scale because that's really going to be a horror show. You want to be able to measure according to uh, weight. That's important. Volume is very, very tricky unless you're working with large quantities. <coughs> according to this plastic steel putty A, make sure you're reading along the correct line. You can see the pot life is at 75 degrees is 45 minutes. Functional cure time is uh, at 75 degrees is uh, 16 hours. Uh, full cure is in 24 hours. But this is going to move along a lot faster than that when you're actually working with it, so be sure that you have everything ready. Your mix ratio by weight is 9 to 1. And in other words, the larger one uh, is mixed with the smaller one, 9 to 1 ratio. The actual volume uh, measurement is 2 and a half to 1. Move these around so they're in that order. So that would be two and a half to one by volume, and that's a very tricky measurement. So I'd rather do it. I'd rather do it on the scale by weight. I'm quite sure that if I use uh, one full teaspoon of putty, that I will have more than enough uh, to work with. Um, this is not going to require an awful lot of uh, putty. That right there, I think, is is more than sufficient. That'll give me uh, that'll give me plenty of uh, putty for uh, later projects. So let me put that into the uh, cup and take note of what the weight is. This is very very stiff. I got 40 grams now, so I've got an even even number to work with. That'll probably confound me. I was math was not my uh, strong suit. So 40, 40 divided by 9, so 4.5, basically 4.44, so it's 4.5 grams of the hardener. But before I proceed, I want to make sure I get rid of this thing here, cover up my cover up that. Now, the important thing to remember is I want to add to this, I want to add to this amount here. So I could either I could either make my measurement uh, by adding 4.4, uh, or I could simply tear it out as I can with this one and add it directly. So now I'll be adding uh, four and a half grams of the hardener. I need to have a. This is why you have to have things ready ahead of time need to have a place to set that. You don't want to get that any place near. Now this is all you get. It looks like it looks like you didn't get anything for your money, but that's all there that's all there is to it. So I want to add four grams 
of, this is extremely lightweight stuff, and do it before your thing zeroes out on you. I think that's really close enough. I've never found DevCon stuff to be that fussy about um, proportions, so I'm going to trust that this is probably about the same deal. I think it's more important that I have enough in rather than uh, insufficient amount. So there's the there's the mixture. Uh, I'll mix that up. As you're mixing this, be very sure, absolutely certain that you've uh, mixed thoroughly. Uh, I would say mix for a minimum of uh, three minutes, uh, scraping the sides as you go with your uh, spoon, with your uh, stick, and continue to mix until you see absolutely no uh, evidence of uh, unmixed uh, white. And it's, it's supposed to be a dark gray uh, color. So that's what I've got here. I've got a charcoal gray uh, mixture. Now I can, uh, and I can basically, I can put this tongue depressor aside for another day. Don't get my fingers into it. And dispose of the, uh, dispose of the paper. Save that tongue depressor. You can use that for, I've used that probably for uh, a half a dozen guns that I'm aware of right now. So I uh, will set that aside. Now we're going to revert to our uh, putty knife and apply it to the stock. This is super important. This cannot be placed in on top of uh, compound because the compound is going to be thick and it's going to get under this and it's going to resist being uh, bottomed out all the way. It'll never, it'll never completely squish out. You want to put that in first. Get that, get that recoil lug in place and uh, bottomed onto bare wood at the bottom. And what we're going to do is apply compound on top of that, and do not lift that up with your don't lift it up with your putty knife. That 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 recoil lug is very very lightweight. Uh, it weighs only a few grams, and that will easily get sucked up by this knife. So uh, pick the nicest side up and uh, leave it in place. We're gonna we're gonna butter down onto it, scraping uh, from front to rear, and then do the uh, other. Uh, bolster recesses the same way uh, from the other direction and work it in carefully. You don't want to put in excess amounts because it's going to squeeze up. Uh, you want to just be a little bit high on everything. It, it, if, if you're basically twice as high as the original surfaces, that will, uh, that will just flow and it'll get everything. So let's begin with that recoil lug. Neatness counts, so try to put it in uh, as carefully as you can, uh, filling any bare wood that you see. Primarily, we're looking to uh, bottom out all that bare wood. Don't go beyond it because uh, if you know when you pile it in, uh, it's it's gonna it's going to flow to the same proportion that is piled. So if you pile it too high on one side, it's going to flow higher on that side than the other side. So you want to try to pile it uniformly uh, so that uh, it has, it has equal, equal flow up the sides. That's plenty of, uh, that's plenty of putty. That small amount of putty that I made up, uh, that basically that was one hefty teaspoon of uh, the base putty and uh, try to not get it where you're not supposed to because uh, it, it makes a mess. If you see that putty has gotten where it's not supposed to be, uh, scrape it out of there. It's going to flow into those areas, but you don't want to have you don't want to have it uh, advantaged on one side more than the other. You just want to uh, put it in equal equally. I'll give you a look at this in a second. We'll get the uh, rear bolster. In this situation, I'm really not interested in applying more than just that, just to fill up that bolster recess. Uh, I don't want to have it squishing out everywhere. 
don't pile it high. It's absolutely not necessary. This this is going to have uh, this is going to have absolutely excellent uh, stability. As you can see, I just filled up the uh, bolster, and I will make sure I scrape off any excess here. Um, and the same with the front. I just I filled this out uh, pretty much level, uh, and that's even straight across with no. Uh, no advantages to one side or the other. Clean up your knife because this stuff, once it sticks, it's going to be on there forever. So the next thing, we're going to drop in that uh, action. One final inspection, make sure I have all my uh, wax on there, make sure the putty is where it's supposed to be. Now this is where it's extremely important to uh, drop it in with care. Try to lower it in, don't drag it in. Try to lower it into where you know the, uh, line it up with the tang, uh, drop it in, find that recoil lug, situate it straight in, make sure you have your recoil lug, and press forward on that tape. Uh, you want to make sure that that, you want to make sure that that barrel is seated tight and in place. Now this is important, pull your, pull your barrel back tight against that uh, recoil lug. Now, we'll draw our attention to putting the trigger guard underneath and put your front uh, action screw in first. Uh, remember, you're, you're driving up through a putty, but that's all right. Now, I tightened it just snugly, and I'll leave that until I put in the tang screw. I'm going to swing my, I'm going to swing my uh, vise around just a little bit because I'm not going to have clearance. Here we go. Can't beat a, you can't beat a, a mechanics vice or a machinist vice for doing stuff like this. It's a lot better than uh, it's a lot better than using uh, Rube Goldberg uh, gunsmith vices, so-called. That really a single purpose. I can use this for anything, whereas handguns, rifles, um, I can use it for things other than guns. So it's a it's it's more than a singular purchase. In fact, you can see the uh, putty now is migrating up out of that hole. Um, now what I've done is I'm tightening those screws until they basically don't want to go any further. Uh, I don't want to over torque them. You don't need to have a, you don't need to have a torque measuring device. Um, but what I'm ensuring is that, um, what I'm ensuring is that Everything has bottomed out. Inspect around the edges and make sure that you have uh, got good firm contact. Uh, after you after you wait about 30 seconds or so, uh, check your screws again and tighten it again because quite frequently uh, that stuff will migrate a little bit slowly. And that's it. You were wondering what the electrical tape was for, probably. This is what we're going to do. We're going to tape the action tightly and wind it down. When I say tightly, I mean just wrap that stuff right around and around and around. And why are we doing that? Because this is actually how the uh, receiver is going to be held in place. Uh, because I'm going to back that, I'm going to back the action screws out. <laughs> now 
because often times when uh, epoxy is setting, uh, it it can change dimension uh, as it as it goes through its uh, curing process, and uh, you want to have you want to give it the freedom to uh, breathe, you might say. Uh, so once I got that taped in place, good and snug. I wound around there plenty of times. Now I'm going to back off those. I'm going to back off these screws uh, a half a turn. And just make sure that they're still in place. You don't want to take them out. But back them off a half a turn. And then back home. In other words, I want to back them out until I've gone a half a turn. Then back in until they just contact bottom. You don't want to, I'm not applying any torque whatsoever. In other words, I'm going from like zero torque to a plus torque. Uh, but without tightening them so that in other words it's holding the it's holding everything in place, but The big work is being done by the tape Now we're all set just again double check make sure your barrel is seated Make sure it's aligned straight down the stock. It should be if you put that tape up there that centers it You're all set now. It's just a matter of waiting Okay, it's been about three and a half or four hours since we uh, set the gun up to uh, set. You want to check back, uh, keep your cup on hand, and when it gets to the point where it is a hard, it is semi-hard, you can put your fingernail, you can put your fingernail into it, and you can basically uh, make a mark in it. Uh, that's the time you start doing a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Uh, you you don't want it, you don't want it to get beyond uh, the elastic point. You want to be able to uh, make uh, make cuts in it with uh, with a uh, sharp instrument without uh, much effort. Any places, inspect any places where uh, some of that uh, plastic steel may have oozed out. In this case here, it's, it actually came out very neat. Uh, I had very, very little seepage. Sometimes, you know, if you're not careful, if you get too aggressive with uh, applying it, uh, it can literally be bubbling out of the sides. You you want to avoid that at all costs because that makes an unnecessary mess. Uh, that that stuff is doing nothing uh, except uh, going to waste and uh, creating a nuisance. So right now, I say this is a very flexible steel. You can also use. Uh, I have uh, I have a tool that uh, was made by Tupperware years ago. Um, that made for uh, opening up uh, citrus, you know, oranges and lemons and things. But this works very nicely. Just basically uh, run it along very carefully. You don't want to, you don't want to scar your uh, metal or the um, finish of your stock. But basically just work around, work around the sides, any place that you see, and trim up uh, trim up any, uh, even your fingernail can work uh, before that stuff sets. Uh, both sides, trim up any any visible areas where that uh, putty has migrated outside. And similarly up front here, you want to peel back your blue tape. And uh, the tape is now doing nothing uh, to uh, protect it. But you can peel back your blue tape and you can see if likewise if it is um, I think it's quite apparent that it hasn't gone uh, hasn't gone beyond the bounds of the tape uh, you can look down in the sides and see it right now everything looks absolutely uh, clean uh, in its in its perfection so just check these ba these places one more time don't rush this process. You want to leave this in for, uh, remember the uh, brochure said 16 hours uh, for uh, functional setup to uh, set completely. It's well worth the, uh, your wait because 
then you know that you have an absolutely solid mass that won't uh, be altered by the removal process because it's still this it's green remember it's, you know as they say with concrete it's, it's still green until you get to the 24 hour period and that's 24 hours at a fairly warm room temperature you know 70 75 degrees so uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow and uh, take this all apart on camera and I'll show you how you remove the uh, barreled action from the stock. And one more thing that we really want to check before, uh, before we go to bed for the night is to make sure that your uh, action screws uh, can be turned. So we'll swing the vise around so we have access to them. Uh, And all we're looking to do is to back them off uh, about three quarters of a turn or so, and then uh, loosely uh, torque them back. And when I say torque them, I'm just saying turn it until, uh, with your fingertips, uh, until the screw doesn't turn anymore uh, easily. So let's. It took very little pressure to uh, release that screw. That's all I need to do is just with my fingertips, uh, release the temp tension on the screw to ensure that uh, the release agent is uh, working. And I don't want to return pressure more than I had to begin with. In other words, I want to just basically back it off and then reset the screw to exactly the same amount of uh, pressure that it had beforehand. And I'll do that with the front screw. Took very little pressure to release that. I'll put it right back where it was without applying torque. I don't want to. I don't want to be changing the compression. This this tape is doing all the work, so allow it to uh, work naturally. Uh, and return your return your vise back around so you're supported for the night. You don't want to come back tomorrow morning and find out that your rifle has hit the deck and made a uh, broken stock of it. So that's all. We're ready to, uh, and we're ready to hit the hay, and we can check it tomorrow. You know, I don't know how many times I've done this operation to various guns, both mine and uh, others. There's always this same feeling that comes over me just before the unveiling. You wonder what it's going to look like. Did it come out right, and all that? And it always does. It always comes out right. Now I've had times when uh, separation of the barrel and the stock didn't want to happen as easily as I had hoped. Uh, I remember one time, if you ever do have, if you ever do have a, a real serious issue trying to get it separated, um, the best thing to do is to put it in a deep freezer. In other words, bring it down to zero and uh, just leave it there for a few hours. That will that will generally uh, allow you to break the break the two apart. But um, they always come apart. Uh, this one here has. Uh, basically only a, less than a teaspoon of the entire um, mixture. Um, it's been 18 hours now since I first mixed this up and this is this is absolutely rock hard. This, this, this cup, this paper cup right now with just this amount of, uh, just this amount of stuff in it is, is, it's like a steel, it's like a tin cup. Uh, very, 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 very hard. If I, if I, if I drop it, it, it it's just, um, it won't even it won't even dent so we're ready to we're ready to unveil it we're ready to uh, see what's cooking underneath so let's get at it electrical tape here and unwind it now remember this remember this part here this is this is vital when you're cradling the forearm, uh, be sure you use your wood, uh, your wood calls, your wood uh, panels underneath uh, between the jaws. Pat it with, this is very thick, this is half inch thick of um, uh, padding. And I have it wrapped underneath so that it makes like a hammock. That way there I don't have to tighten the vise. The vise is basically just hanging onto this cloth. The cloth can't go anywhere, it can't slip between those two boards. So that gives you uh, perfect support for working on the gun without crushing the uh, 
fragile area of the stock where it's, it's thin there and you certainly don't want to inhibit uh, the natural process of uh, bedding. It's like taking a cast off, you know, after you've had a broken bone. so good it looks good now we'll unwind it the screws move out the screws move out very very easily well here it goes I'm taking the rear tang screw out That release agent works very nicely with uh, this epoxy bedding. Front screw is a little bit snug. That's a good sign because hopefully epoxy has journeyed down that screw hole. And you know what that does? It provides the pillar. In other words, along the shank of that screw, you have uh, steel epoxy that is coming down, and that becomes basically a collar, and that provides uh, resistance against any squishiness that might occur with the uh, between the grain. Now, very dense walnut like this doesn't have any compressibility of any measurable amount, uh, but there may be a little bit of torque there. Two things that we did to uh, eliminate any torquey issues with regard to the screwdriver uh, tensioning. First of all, we bridged rather than glued the whole thing. By gluing the whole thing, if, that, if this area of the stock should someday develop a hump in it, then torquing the action down will basically buckle the action and cause uh, instability problems that, we, that you don't want. By not having by not having any uh, possibility of that hump by bridging across the two screws, now we have now we have a, a situation where there's absolute firm uh, there's absolutely firm bedding at both screw ends without worrying about torque issues, and that means you don't really have to worry about how much you compress uh, with your with your screwdriver. In other words, how much torque you have to apply. Those issues are gone now forever. Tightening this action simply means tightening the screw down to it's reasonably tight, like you put a ketchup bottle cap on. And if you if you want to have a little bit extra firmness, you can also uh, add a drop of medium Loctite, medium thread, thread lock of some kind. Never use uh, heavy thread lock. That stuff is designed to never come apart, and you don't want to glue your uh, you don't want to glue your screw in. So here goes. I've got both screws out. I've got the um, and I just I do want to show you. I have a evidence of a pillar right here. So we've created a uh, pillar bedding without even without even having to bore anything out. Uh, this stuff is extremely hard. I mean, this is we're talking about steel here. The back is of no concern. You don't need to pillow bed the back screw. The back screw is going to be uh, floating, remember. I'm going to chase that out so that uh, there's no contact with the screw to the wood. The front screw, I want to have it uh, firmly bedded all the way up, and that provides that, that provides that nice support. Okay, let's see if I can get this apart now. If you have a problem, uh, you know, getting it, I, I'm going to just simply see if I can pry it apart because there's very little... There's very little bedding compound in here, but if you ever have an issue with getting it apart, just simply grasp, grasp everything tightly, and with your with your with a firm downward stroke on a soft object. Not, you know, when I say a soft object, I'm saying put a pillow on your bench or something like that. Just stroke firmly down onto the barrel, and that'll lift the barrel up off of the stock, off the off the uh, channel, and it'll just simply pop it loose. 
But I think it's going to come free. Make sure you have everything tight, because usually when these things go, they snap apart, and you don't want to have it flying across the... There we go. We've got a... Our putty is still in place where we put it. To get rid of that putty, just uh, simply scrape it out with a uh, plastic, you know, plastic tool of some kind. And it's very, very easy to get uh, the remnant out with some acetone. Acetone will take that putty out, uh, and uh, it'll also take the uh, wax off of that uh, barrel nicely. You have to use uh, acetone outdoors. Don't ever use acetone inside because it's very, very uh, combustible, very flammable. So let's take a look at what we have here. Well, I think we got perfection. <clears throat> I'm very happy with this. The uh, rear tang is uh, nicely distributed. That distribution is what we worked for by making sure that we leveled it out so there's no high sides on one side or the other because wherever it's high, remember I told you, it's going to tend to flow more into those uh, in, into those areas. So try to try to distribute it evenly to begin with, and you'll have even distribution when you uh, get done. The uh, tang, the tang area, the screw at the bottom. Uh, I didn't put as much I didn't put as much compound in, so naturally we didn't have. There's not much to chase out. Don't be drilling anything out until you've at least reached the 24-hour period. And I'm not going to be putting this back together. I don't want to have. I don't want to have any possibility that this. This is 18 hours old, but it's still considered green. It's not going to be fully hard for 24 hours in a 75-degree environment. So, but up here, look at this. We got. We got nice. We got nice contact. Um, I don't know if you can see. The uh, the bolsters, the way they the way they made their own little home right here. Uh, I think. If I if I can tilt it in the with the shadows correctly, you see how the bolsters now have created their own uh, home, front and rear, and they those provide a very very meaningful uh, resistance to uh, lateral or uh, fore and aft travel. So uh, there's absolutely solid bedding there. And you see how you see how right here there's even uh, an impression where the uh, where the receiver left a left its own mark. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of machine marks that have uh, been uh, left here. This is a negative impression of your entire receiver. Uh, the recoil the recoil surface, the recoil lug is is beautifully bedded. Uh, it's, it's bright and shiny on the leading edge where it's up against the uh, where it's up against the uh, recoil and which is nice. Nice and shiny. There's no there's no compound there. That means that when I push the that's achieved by pushing the barrel the barreled action back against that uh, bedding block before we set the screws. And the rear of it, it filled in it filled in whatever gap there may have been. So this this bedding block this uh, this is now a permanently attached recoil lug. So everything is the way we ought to uh, want it, and it's pillar bedded in the front. Uh, we just leave it as that. Uh, that'll that'll be a very very firm surface that helps control recoil too. If you happen to have a heavy recoiling gun, that is uh, that provides extremely good uh, surface contact to uh, add additional uh, strength. So there you have it. I'm glad you were able to see this because, frankly, there aren't too many demonstrations online uh, that I consider to be. Uh, very, very uh, informative. Uh, some of them show uh, segments of this process without really getting into uh, how it's done. So I wanted to show you how to do this. It's not very difficult to do, but it's not easy work. It's, it's, it's detailed, uh, precise work. And for anybody who is interested in uh, giving it a try, I encourage you to do so. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and mention me to your friends. God bless.